We right. continue now with Michael Steele, Steve Elmendorf, and Chris uh, Salisa with us. Uh, all right, now, Michael, let me go to you. So if you, yeah. if you say, if you refer to in San Francisco, bitter Americans cling right. to their guns and religion, antipathy towards our, those that aren't like them. And a local congressman says you're racist and a redneck. Yeah. I, I'm having a hard time figuring out, if I lived in Pennsylvania, I wouldn't vote for you for saying that. Why, yeah. why do you think they've gotten a pass, uh, at least in the polls? Well, I, I think they've gotten a pass because of how the, the media has played it out. I think how it's been stressed or not stressed. Uh, you know that you know well it's Martha and it's it's Pennsylvania so naturally right I mean I mean I can't believe Steve I, I thought I heard Steve say that the people of Pennsylvania would agree with Martha that those folks are racist and redneck I mean I, I, I just don't didn't don't say that Michael didn't say I, that I don't see I don't see how that can uh, how that can stand scrutiny I mean right. it, it's, Let it's me a ask blatantly the same question. can I just finish this Go it's ahead. a blatantly stupid comment to make period and yeah. Martha should know better and, and his explanation of it is even dumber. All right, but Chris, I guess if we look at this, the big picture, you know, if you would have told me a year ago or two years ago that a guy that's friends with an unrepentant terrorist, a guy that sits in Jeremiah Wright's church for 20 years, friends with Father Flager, has a really shady business deal with Tony Resco, uh, a slumlord, convicted slumlord, and and can make comments about bitter Americans in Pennsylvania that cling to their guns and religion and hate other people, I'd say this guy couldn't get elected. But you know what? That's on paper. Why why is he able to transcend it in these polls if you believe the polls? And I'm not so sure I do believe all of them. I, I, Sean, I think, you know, I think the primary election taught us don't believe all polls. That said, I think you see as many polls as are out there right now, and I think they generally get the right idea. I, I believe that, uh, and this again is taken from polling over a long period of time, people want change. They, they, if you look at our so Washington Post, so change polls, Sean, just for change's sake. I, I'm seriously, I want to well, understand they, better. They, Sean, let me, I just want to put in perspective. If you look at the Washington Post ABC News poll, 8% of people believe this country is in the, uh, headed in the right direction. 90% think it's in the wrong direction. 23% approve of the job that George Bush is doing. Yeah, but now, Congress has is a that lower directly correlated? Well, uh, is that directly correlated to John McCain? No, uh, it's not, but it impacts the race. And Barack me, uh, Obama has smartly positioned himself to be that change agent. Me, uh, I think that's why you see him uh, ahead where he is. Let me get Steve in here. I'll talk to you, Steve. Uh, okay. you know, I don't hear Democrats <laughs> playing this game. Uh, you know, William Timmons, head of the presidential transition team for John McCain, was a lobbyist for, for Saddam Hussein at the very time that Bill Clinton uh, was launching strikes against Iraq. Sarah Palin's husband, member of a party, a secessionist party, and she herself did a welcoming video for them and was in sync with them, and their founder said he hated America and wouldn't want to be buried in this country. I don't hear Democrats beating that drum, but they certainly could if they wanted to play the game of guilt by association. That's because we have a candidate who we're comfortable with. We have a candidate who has something to say about the economy. And to go back to, as Sean said earlier, go up to 30,000 feet. What this election is about is Barack Obama and what he has to say about America's economic future against John McCain, who has nothing to say about America's economic future, right. who uh, people look at and they realize he doesn't have anything to say. So he talks about Bill Ayers or he talks so about all this like other stuff. That's not pundits. what people want to hear about. Steve, as well, but, John, but John McCain has something very simple to say. He's going to cut taxes. Taxes and kill terrorists. That's uh, well, it. Well, that's very nice. It sounds a nice. That's a nice sound bite. He's actually going to tax true. people on their health care plans, and he hasn't told us oh, please, what the Alan, plan you know is that's not to kill right. terrorists. Doesn't it concern you about the links to Saddam Hussein to the McCain campaign, the lobbyists on the McCain campaign, the secessionist party that Sarah Palin is buddy buddy with, the fact that they hate America? Shouldn't that concern you? Who are you asking, Michael? No. Why not? Because it doesn't, because you asked the question. Well, I mean, okay, but you, we you're concerned about point, Barack to, Obama's associations, point, but not the these. Point, but, you know, the, you get to the point, Alan, where, you know, you do the tit for tat, and the bottom line is whether Sarah Palin did this, that, or the other thing is irrelevant. Barack, Barack Obama has not come out and fully explained or dealt into these issues. That's why we're still talking Neither about Neither has the other them. side, but and, with and the, the same standards got to apply. The reality of it is, if you're going to raise it, then we'll talk about it. But the reality of it is, right. Barack is not. I haven't heard the answers issues. on the other side, but I think we thank you all very much.